Hello everyone, today's video is about the Anytone AT-D878UV. It's the first time I review an Anytone product in, on my YouTube channel, but I did review the Anytone AT-D868UV in the past, but for the QST magazine. If you look at my website into the publication page, you will find that article. I really love the 868, but the 878 is just a little bit more. It has more function than the other one. It looks physically very, very close to the other. The difference you will find, the, uh, the visual difference you can find on it is the button here is blue instead of orange and you don't have the orange color on top of the antenna. The screen is also by default, you have a black screen with white font, which looks absolutely amazing. I really like it and still have the color display in there. But other than that, you won't see any difference. But as it comes to feature, there is a lot more features in this one. This one support roaming. That means you can, with the GPS signal, you can actually switch repeaters, okay, for the closest to you. And can switch seamlessly doing roaming like you will do with a cell phone. So this is great if you have a repeater network that support roaming, well, you can uh, do that in your area. I know in Montreal I can do it. I know some guys did it, but I, I'm, I'm not too familiar with that. I will have to test it out in a, another video. This video also support APRS. It support analog APRS and digital APRS, which is called DPRS. And I did test the analog APRS. It's sending a beacon and everything, as you can see right now. It works very well. You also, uh, it support the DPRS, which I tested on a specific TG as well. So this is awesome. I also like the fact that this radio, you can still go into the menu when you have a receive signal. This is not the case to all DMR radio, but this one you can, which is great. I really, really like it. I dropped this radio on the floor mat on my st outside step when I was leaving home one morning, about four feet above the ground. And the floor mat is a very, very hard rubber about this thick, and it sits directly on the cement. And I dropped this radio, but the main thing, it was minus 19 degrees centigrade that morning when I dropped it about four feet above the ground. I was pretty sure that this was going to break, but it didn't do anything. It just fell okay and the battery didn't even take took off so this is very very good very rugged unit i really really enjoy this radio i've been using it for the past two months and i really really like it the battery the battery lasts forever it's 3100 milliamps and it lasts they say up 35 hours and plus and yes if you put it in standby this battery never dies. It, it's actually i left it one week a full week in my car and i was using it an hour in the morning an hour at night and i did that for uh, the whole week and the battery was still very very good and uh, no issue on that without recharging so this is awesome so we will go through the radio and we'll be back after for a final In the box, you will find a desktop charger with a power pack, and you also find an eye gain rubber duck antenna, the radio, and a 3100 milliamps battery, plus the programming cable. When you receive a brand new radio and you install the programming software, the first thing you should do is actually get a backup of the config that is was initially into the radio. So to do so, you install the software, then you plug with the programming cable the radio, you check and you select the right COM port, and then you read the radio. From there, after you do a save and save it as initial config. Before we go further into the CPS, the first thing you will need to do, if you want to use APRS or DPRS, you will need to go into Tools and Option and activate GPS and APRS, so you will have this config here. If you go after into 
tool you can import from there the digital contact list from uh, DMR, uh, the, the, the full DMR ID from radio ID. Okay, then you can import it from there. You can also update the firmware from here and change the boot uh, image uh, for the radio when you turn it on. After that, you have the common DMR config like channel, zone. You also have some roaming zone. You have some roaming channel, okay, that you can set up. And you have optional setting, okay. There's a lot of config there, but don't forget to activate the GPS, okay. This is important and get the positioning. You also on par power on, hold on, on power on, I did put my call sign, so you can have your call sign printed when you boot, okay. And there's a lot of programming you can do there also. When you when it comes to APRS, then you have the uh, intervals, okay, that you can configure uh, for the beacon and you also uh, can set up a fixed position if you would like. There you have the analog configuration for the analog APRS and there you have the digital APRS config. You have to set up a channel and make sure that you send to a specific TG your position. Other than that, you have the radio ID list that you can have, and you also can uh, check out the digital contact list right here. So this covers pretty much the programming software. Let's go through the radio. On top of the radio, you have this LED indicator that's showing you when you receive a signal or when you transmit. You also have this volume knob, which also turn on and off the radio. You have this knob here, which allows you to switch between memory or switch frequency when you're in VFO mode. And this button here is programmable. If you do a short push on it, it will activate the FM radio broadcast. Okay, just like this. Okay, let's turn it down. But if you use the knob here, you can change the frequency of the radio broadcast. Please note that right now I'm in VFO mode, but you can also program some memory for the broadcast radio. If you do a momentary push again, the radio is now off. So if you do a long push, it will show you the battery voltage. If you go on the side here, you have the speaker mic input which is Kenwood compatible this is very standard okay let's close it on the other side you have the PTT and two other programmable button they also have the momentary push when you push on this one it will activate the digital monitor you have the single slot you have the double slot and you can turn it off single slot double slot turn it off what this does, it's actually a very, very cool feature. Let's say you're in an area where you don't know which TG are available on the repeater. Well, you can turn this on and you can monitor once one time slot or two time slot at the same time. And all TG that will transmit this can help you find the active TG on that repeater. So that can be very useful to do monitoring but also to find out what's available on that repeater. If you don't have the information, I get a lot of requests of people asking me to help program their DMR radio. And what happened is I don't know what repeaters they have around, what's the TG, so you need to contact your local club or the uh, repeaters owner. And uh, otherwise you can do that and use that function for this. And it's very useful to monitor multiple TG at the same time. But remember, when you're going to transmit, you're going to be on the TG you are on, <laughs> okay? And on the time slot, you are programmed that memory. So if you, uh, if you try to transmit, maybe you won't be on the same TG as the receive signal that you have if you activate the TG monitor. But it's, it's very, very cool and very useful. The other button under, you can switch. This is by default. You can program the button as you wish. But this you can switch the power level. So you have low, medium, high, and turbo. Okay, so this is the power level. Let's put it back in low. 
You have also two programmable button air, which has a momentary push. You'll switch VFO from VFO A on top, VFO B at the bottom. And you can see that VFO A is active by the size of the font that is bigger. Okay. If I switch to the bottom, see, it's at the bottom VFO. And then if I do a momentary push again on P1, then it's the VFOA that is uh, active. If you do a long push, it will actually switch you into VFO mode. And when you're in VFO mode, okay, remember this radio does VHF and UHF on both VFO, okay? You see, you can also switch. I did put the step at five kilohertz, okay? It's easier to work with than 12.5. And you can also switch back to VHF if you want. And you can also program the radio completely from the keypad, which is great. If you go on the other VFO, you can do the same. Do a long push and then you will switch in VFO and you can have VHF or UHF frequency as well. If you go back in memory, you just do a long push again. Okay. And then you can switch zone with this button here. In the zone, you can switch the memory like this. And you see the channel memory, you have all the memory number even though if they are allocated in two different zones, which is very useful, okay? And if you switch air, a momentary push, it will shut down the VFO under, which is VFO B, okay, the bottom VFO. But if you push it back again, it will bring the VFO again, but it will always keep the active VFO when you do a sub VFO off, okay? So this is good as well. There you go, so we can put it back on. But when you're in one VFO like this, you can switch between A and B anyway, okay? Let's go back. This support VHF and UHF, VV, UU, no problem, VU, UV, whatever configuration you would like. But when you receive a signal, you can monitor both VFO, but when you receive a signal on one, then it would mute the other even though if you are one in digital or another one in analog. Okay, that's what I found in my test. If you look at the screen, okay, what I like about any tone screen is that it has a lot more information than what we used to have on a DMR radio. If you look on top here, you have the, the signal, receive signal. You also have the power level. You have the GPS. Remember, I'm in my basement and I have no GPS signal. So that's why it's gray out. Otherwise, when I have a, a, a GPS signal, it's red. This, the number you see here, C02, this is color code 2, okay? And then you have digital for the channel, the channel number, memory number. And then you have the time slot, which is time slot 1. And then you have R to say it's a repeater frequency. That means the transmit and receive frequency are not the same. And at the bottom, you will find the same thing. If I go there, you will find I'm in digital. Okay. And then I have, uh, I'm on type slot one. Okay. Now let's change the mode. When you're in VFO mode, you can also change the mode. So let's do a long push. And then we'll change A plus D. What that means is if I transmit, I transmit in analog. But if I receive a digital signal or an analog signal, I will be able to decode it because it's monitoring both modes at the same time. But it will transmit in analog. That's why A is first. Another long push and then I switch from D plus A. It's the same thing. But when you transmit, you transmit in digital. If you do that again, you will be only in analog. And if you do that again, you will be only in digital. So you have four ways you can use the mode. If we go into the menu, in the menu, well, f first thing, with, with any tone radio, when you receive a signal, you can still go in the menu. This is very handy. I remember I have to QSY to be able to go in the menu, do a configuration because I was receiving something. So this is uh, uh, not very good, okay? But this one does support going into the menu while you have a receive signal, which is great. If you come down there, you can switch on. You have the common thing for uh, DMR radio. It also supports roaming. Roaming lets you 
uh, go between repeaters, okay? And uh, the GPS will actually uh, find the closest repeater and then you, you can roam like you do with a normal cellular, let's say. I know in my region in Montreal, the repeaters network are supporting roaming, so I'll have to test that out in the future, but this is a very cool feature that you can activate on this radio. You have the settings, you have the GPS, uh, you have the DG monitor. This is what I told you, the button right here. You see, if you go, you can switch between, you can monitor different time slots. You have the APRS menu, you have the analog APRS, digital APRS, okay? And you can set up the beacon and the time interval and etc. And there you go. So we will go into the setting. In the setting, if you go in the radio setting, you can configure everything from there, okay? So you can actually enhance the sound of your, uh, your microphone. Let's say you are in a noisy environment, it's windy, you're outside. Well, you can enhance by using this feature or keeping it normal. You can do a lot of stuff here, change the font, uh, whatever, frequency step, the squelch, Everything can be set up over the mic level. Let's see, that's it. Oh, there's a lot. You see the short push and the <laughs> for the key programmation. Then you have the channel set. You can hit it the channel. You can actually set in VFO uh, a frequency. Let's say for your hotspot. Then switch in digital. And while you're in digital, you can set up from air. You can set up repeater offset. Okay you can set up the radio id you can change your radio id you have the color code you can set up the time slot you can set up the, the tg you want to operate on and uh, that is very 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 cool so this cover pretty much this radio victor alpha 2 papa victor testing vr2 pv lsa Victor Alpha 2, Papa Victor, testing. VR2, PV, LSM. Victor Alpha 2, Papa Victor, testing. VR2, PV, LSM. Victor Alpha 2, Papa Victor, testing. VR2, PV, LSM. In conclusion, I really, really like the Anytone ATD878UV. I like the fact that it supports APRS. It's very AM radio friendly. You can program anything from the keypad. You can still uh, go to the menu when you have a receiving signal. This is awesome. They thought of everything and I did work with this radio for the past two months and I really, really enjoy it. I'm pretty confident that if I come back to this radio after a little while without using it, I will be, you know, I will be back using it and programming it very quickly because it's so easy to operate. Thanks Anytone for making this great radio for us. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and also don't forget to click on the notification bell if you want to be notified as soon as a new video is online. For now, I'll say Happy New Year to you all and 73. Catch you some other time.